Hey guys, Richard Holder here and welcome to the channel. Today it's all about more other guy stuff. I'm talking about a supercharged 3800 V6 cam swap. How much power does it make and what does it do to the boost? In this video, we're gonna take a look at a camshaft upgrade on our 3800 Series 3 supercharged, you know, the little other guys V6. That's right, we're gonna compare the factory camshaft to a comp cams upgrade and we're looking really for two things one i want more power as always from our camshaft we know the factory series 3 camshaft is very mild so with a cam upgrade i'm hoping we get more power but every bit is important i actually want less boost and i know you're thinking richard why on earth on a supercharged combination would you want less boost well our 3800 series 3 motor is already making about 15 or 16 pounds of boost with a stock cam. We have a pulley upgrade and headers on it, and I actually want more power and less boost. Can the camshaft do that? After comparing a number of other things on our 3800 Series 3 L32 V6, we ran pump gas, E85, we ran a couple of different pulleys on the supercharger on the Gen 5 M90. We, all, we even did a compound boost where we used a turbo, a single turbo GT45, the low buck one, to blow through the M90 supercharger. All of those, that video is up, so you guys can take a look at that stuff. But after doing that, we decided it was time for a cam change. So what we wanted to do, we had our supercharger already equipped with a 3.2 inch blower pulley. We retained that. We ran the motor in stock uh, with the stock camshaft with the 3.2 pulley and with the tubular headers, which we had also tested previously. Now they didn't show a great deal of power versus a stock one when we'd run it at a very low power level. And we may revisit that at a later time, but we had the headers, we had the 3.2 pulley, and we had the stock camshaft and the M90 supercharger. We ran all this testing on E85. Both combinations, both camshafts ran the same ignition timing, which varied from at the load in point of about 20 or 21 degrees 
all the way up at the power peak up to 24 degrees. So both of them had the same timing curve. We also kept the air fuel consistent around 11.8, 11.9 to make good power with the 85. And what we wanted to find out is what the drop in boost was obviously and then the change in power. So this was our combination run with the stock camshaft, 341.2 horsepower, so 342, 359 foot-pounds of torque. You can see, you know, pretty flat torque curve, um, power's leveling off, peak power came fairly early between 5,500 and 6,000 RPM. This was actually registered with a peak boost of 15.8 or 15.9 pounds, so it's quite a bit. Unfortunately, I didn't have the boost curves logging on the dyno. We only have that on the, um, on the Holly HP management system. So here's what happened when we put our comp cam in. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. They are 510 lift. This was a comp 264HR15 camshaft. 510 lift, a 210, 220 degree duration split, and a 115 degree lobe separation angle. So it still had a good idle quality, even though we didn't uh, spend a lot of time trying to figure out the idle vacuum and stuff because we were more interested in what happened with the power output. So here's what happened when we installed our camshaft. That's it. We also upgraded, as you can see in the photos here and in the installation videos, you can see that we upgraded the valve springs as well. We installed a set of used LS6 springs. So I had blue springs from an LS application that I had laying around. So we had to take out the, the installed height is different on the 3800. So we took shims out, put the LS6 springs in, and everything worked out pretty well with this 500 lift cam. Here's what happened when we did our cam swap. You can see big power. I mean, the power jumped up by about 40 horsepower all the way up to 382 or 381.9. Peak torque was also up 373.7. And you can see not only do we gain lots of power out on the top, we actually rev this a little farther all the way out to 6400 rather than stopping at 6,000 RPM with a stock camshaft. The thing that I like is we gained power everywhere, even at our load in point of 3,100 RPM. We'd already picked up 359 to 366. So we already picked up like six or seven foot pounds down there. And the most important thing is that we didn't lose anything down there. So this small camshaft, there was no trade-off. It was just better everywhere. And we would suspect that it would be as good as the stock cam, um, even down below 3,000 RPM. But we got about a 40 horsepower gain. And the other nice thing is that I'm going to show you the boost curve on the run with a cam because we were able to log that on the dyno. But the boost dropped quite a bit. It actually dropped from about 16 pounds down to about 11 pounds. So we had a drop in boost of about five pounds, which I know a lot of guys are going to say, yeah, but you don't want to drop boost. No, you do. <laughs> you don't want the supercharger producing a lot of pressure. You want it producing a lot of flow and a lot of power at a lower boost level, which means a lower charge temperature. So now let's take a look at a couple things. We're going to take a look at the charge temperature readings that we took during the test and also the exhaust gas temperature readings. We'll take a look at both of those right now. Here's a graph of the boost curve offered by the combination run with the comp cam to got a peak of 12.1. And I know what you're thinking, hey Richard, I thought you said that the supercharged version with the cam only made about 11 pounds. Well, what, what I was doing was comparing them both at 6,000 RPM because that's as high as we ran the, the motor with the stock cam because it was already done making power. We didn't continue to run it out to 6,400. Had we run it out to 6,400, its boost would have climbed as well too. So I was just taking a comparison at the highest number that we saw with the factory one, which was getting close to 16 pounds. So 16 versus 11, there's about a five pound difference. And we would expect to see at least that much if we revved the stock cam out this far too, because it would be past where the thing want, really wanted to make power. But at any rate, the we dropped about five pounds of boost going to this camshaft. But as you can see, we have, we're starting out around a little over eight pounds and then we're rising to a peak of 12.1 at 6,400. It's staying fairly consistent all the way out to past 5,000. Even at 5,000, we're only at uh, around, you know, nine, two or so. Um, so it's still only gaining about a pound of boost there. But then you can see after that, especially past 5,500, it, start rises, it rises up fairly rapidly. So what that tells me is, and we saw this with the stock cam as well, 
what it tells me is that this thing could still use more cam timing. We want to try to negate some of that boost rise out at the top and make the thing more efficient out in that RPM range. And we can do that with cam shafting, with cam shaft, as we saw when we did this cam install. Now let's take a look at the exhaust gas temperature and the air inlet temperature. Taking a look at our charge temperature at roughly uh, between 11 and 12 pounds with the comp cam, we see that we had we started out on this run at 115 degrees at our load in point and rose to a peak of 180 degrees out at 6400 rpm the thing i want to notice i want you to note is that take a look at this the 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 boost curve was rising on our supercharger as we saw in the previous video and the temperature therefore is also rising the, the air temperature going into the motor but i also want to show you something else if we take a look at a couple of the other runs which vary we can see the following thing so this is another run with the comp cam it's just that it started out at a higher temperature we started out at 137 degrees so the temperature the starting temperature of the of the the air under the supercharger is going to change. It's going to change by how long you're idling, even though it has a bypass valve and it's recirculating, how much temperature is in the motor, especially under a temperature, if this is actually in a car. All of that is going to vary the starting temperature under there, how long you've been driving, whether or not you've made, you've just made another high boost run because this thing is non-intercooled. So if you're hot lapping this car, driving around in traffic, you're going to have a lot of inlet temperature to start out with. And as you can see here, having more inlet temperature to start out with meant that we had more temperature at the end. In this case, it was up to 193 degrees. Now we saw some of these runs, when we would run consecutive runs, get up near 200 degrees, even higher than this 193 degrees, even at the lower boost level offered with the comp cam. So we suspect, I didn't measure it because we didn't put this temperature probe in until after we had done the cam swap, but we know from previous experience that that something running 15 or 16 pounds non-intercooled with this Eaton supercharger plus the temperature of the day was about six or eight degrees hotter this thing had to be 250 or 260 degrees at the higher boost level with a stock cam too hot too bad not a good idea now let's take it the EGTs so we monitored the, the exhaust gas temperature while we were making some runs, and actually this is in a prep for more testing that I was going to do with a water methanol, water methanol injection kit from Snow Performance. And what I wanted to find out is, we wanted to find out two things. Previously I showed you what the increase in charge temperature was, and especially important if you're running very high boost. But also I wanted to monitor the exhaust gas temperature, and I wanted to find out what the effect was on both of these if we were to add different amounts of water methanol ejection. I was even going to try the boost juice from Snow Performance and windshield washer fluid to see if there's a difference between those two. But mostly I wanted to find out what the drop in charge temperature was, obviously if there was any corresponding change in power, and also what the drop in EGT was. And if you take a look at this graph, you can see why I was concerned. We would start at our load in point of 3100 RPM, we would be at 1137 uh, degrees. And this is monitored, I'll show you a photo here of the where we were monitoring the temperature. It's actually out in the collector after the headers merged together. So we were starting out at 1137 degrees and rose to a peak of 1476 degrees, which is very high, which is why, <laughs> excuse me, which is why I want to find out if the water methanol injection was going to improve the situation both in terms of charge temperature and EGTs and to see if the change was the same or if it offered a greater change in exhaust gas temperature but unfortunately our motor let go and we will not be able to show you that test until later on let's get to our conclusion okay guys what do we learn from this little adventure doing a cam swap on our 3800 series 3 supercharged v6 where we learned the following thing the stock cam, very mild. Even a mild upgrade cam, like the little cam that we put in from Comp Cams, made a ton of power. I mean, we got a gain of 40 horsepower, but every bit is important. We also dropped the boost by about five pounds. Always good. Lower charge temperatures, it makes it safer. Less chance of detonation. So that's a win-win. More power and lower boost. Now we could go ahead and raise the boost back up, and we might do that in a test at a later date. But for right now, unfortunately, this motor decided to check out. That's right, we're doing even more testing later on after our camshaft test. 
we ran into a problem. This thing spun a bearing, and maybe it was hurt a long time ago. We don't know. But in any case, I'm going to have to get another motor. But lucky for me, there's plenty of those right over there in the wrecking yard. Armature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Lots more testing on the 3800 and lots of other motors coming up.